three, two, one. Howdy, I'm Dahlia, half of Galactic Hunter, and I'm an astrophotographer. I'd like to say I'm a pro, but I'm not. I have the knowledge, but I lack the skills. So the point is, I'm on a redo beginner into astro journey, and you're coming along with me. In this series, I'm going to go from a total beginner to an advanced astrophotographer. The goal is not to watch me struggle, which is funny. It's to teach beginners how to advance in this hobby by making strategic upgrade choices and learning how to capture objects with what I have. I like journaling and video games. Mash those up and here we are. I'm the main character, so come along as I advance through the levels. And just for fun, at the end of each episode, I'll be rewarded with tokens to upgrade my gear. I'm attempting to do this on my own, so I'm just gonna pretend that Antoine doesn't exist this whole series, because it's all about me, baby. In this first episode, join me as I challenge myself to start from the bottom. Like actual rock bottom, because I'm starting out with a rock. Okay, let's do this. So today being my first day as an astrophotographer, I'm eager to capture something, but I don't really have any gear. All I have is this camera, and it came with a kit lens, and that's all I got. I would really love to have a tripod or an intervalometer, but I don't have them yet. And maybe when I can upgrade, those are the first things I will get, but that only happens when I level up. So next I'll talk about what's going to be going into my bag, and literally I have Nothing! There's nothing in this bag, except literally the two things that I said before, which is the Canon 7D Mark II, which I have right here. And typically, um, you know, these DSLR cameras come with a kit lens, which is pretty standard with DSLR cameras, so I'm bringing that too, which is perfect for what I have in mind for my target. And, you know, this equipment is basic to say the least, and that's Miss Basic with a QUE. And that's it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put things in the car and you know, just, we're ready. And my target tonight is the Milky Way and not the candy bar. It's the actual Milky Way. So let's get to it. Approaching Death Valley, I'm already kind of here, just trying to find a spot um, to image for the night because uh, here, here I am doing the thing. I decided to do Milky Way photography because I have never done it before and that's kind of also like what beginners do when they start out. Um, I've never taken a picture of the Milky Way before by myself so I'm kind of like I mean, if I can do it, that means anybody can do it. So let's go. An important note as to why I chose Death Valley for this Milky Way shot is because I needed to escape the light pollution dome from nearby cities. From here, the sky where the Milky Way rises and sets, southeast all the way to the west, is dark and clean. If I went, let's say, north of Las Vegas, the Milky Way shot would have been so ruined by the light pollution dome. If you're a beginner, make sure not only to find a dark site, but also one that is not affected by a light pollution dome toward your target. So firstly, and sadly, I have to talk about Audrey Apo, which was my 70 millimeter uh, refractor from Mead. Um, I'm not going to be using that in this series because it's been discontinued. So, I mean, I feel like part of this beginner series that I wanted to do was for it to be like really helpful to other people. And I don't think using a discontinued product is very reflective of that. So I'm not going to be using that. Um, instead, I'm going to start from literal rock bottom, like a, a rock. I don't have a tripod, 
I just have this camera. <laughs> so I need to find a rock. And um, I think I talked about finding a cool foreground before, which we found already right here. Sorry, I found Antoine doesn't exist. Um, and it's really, really beautiful. Like, it's amazing. This is Death Valley, it's amazing. So now that I found my cool foreground, um, I need to find a rock. Like I said earlier, as a complete beginner, all I have is my camera and my lens. So I need something to act as a tripod. And I have to use what I got, so I got improvised. And you know, I could use a rock. And you think I'm exaggerating, but this is exactly what we did on our first night under the stars. We found a rock nearby and we put it on our car and then we angled it. So I need to make sure that I find a nice smooth shaped rock that doesn't have any uh, gross creepy crawlies underneath. Stella's tired. Me too. I've been bitten by a bug on the side of my face already. That hasn't been fun. Anyway, we're here at a place where people come to at Death Valley. So of course there's people behind me. Um, and I managed to find a rock. I found a rock. And this is where we're gonna make magic together. So I'll be, um, God, this is so scary. Uh, we're gonna make some magic tonight. Now we know that this is kind of southward facing, so I know that this is where the Milky Way is gonna come up. Um, and I guess all we need to do now is get the right settings and wait for nightfall, which is probably the most boring part of all, but we're gonna get through this. So something I also forgot to mention was what my gear was, and uh, you saw my camera before, and I'm not gonna be using the telescope, as I said, Audrey's dead. I'm gonna be using something really simple and something that comes with pretty much ev any DSLR camera, which is the kit lens. So instead of, you know, just jumping into something because that's not the true beginner struggle, I'm gonna be using what I have. I got my rock, uh, I don't have a tripod. Uh, instead of a telescope, I'll be using this kit lens. And of course I have my camera. And we're gonna make some magic happen with what we got. Oh, I scared her. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. So it's uh, almost close to nightfall. It's getting pretty dark, so of course hunger is striking and uh, I did not come here unprepared. If anything, I'm a girl who loves her snacks. Uh, but I need a meal because it's dinner. So I brought one of these um, camping bags and I'm gonna, I put some water in here already to, this is a jet boil, which is really, really cool. We're gonna ignite that, put this on top of there and uh, it's gonna boil some water so that I can put it into this bag and then it's just gonna sit in there for a couple of minutes and then make a delicious meal. I've had it before, so I really, really like it. It's uh, definitely a must do when you don't want to refrigerate stuff. So a very simple way to know where to point your camera is to either locate something inside of the Milky Way band like Scorpius or the teapot asterism or to use a free app on your phone. And that's probably easier, yay! So in my case, the Milky Way again is gonna be right in front of us here and I'm gonna try to match that angle with the camera just like that. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. So it's time to get to business and uh, I have my camera here, so let's get all the settings going. The settings I'm starting with here are the lens focal length and I set it at the widest, which is 18 millimeters. That way I can get as much of the Milky Way band in the frame as possible. I also want to consider aperture, which is f3.5 for this lens, which allows me to capture light from these dark skies fast. ISO 1600. 800 to 1600 is a good starting point and I can always increase this later if I want to. And lastly, exposure time. So this is very important because I don't have a star tracker. Mm, so I'm gonna have to use what's called the 500 rule and it's terrible because I'm really, really bad at math. Uh, it's a 
basic beginner equation used to figure out the longest exposure time before I see star trails. The rule is 500 divided by our focal length, which if we use an APS-C sensor like this camera should be multiplied by the crop factor, which is 1.6. And um, after you math, 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 it comes out to 16.6. You're supposed to play it safe and round that number down to 16, but I'm gonna round it up to 20 seconds cause mm, I don't mind if I see a bit of trailing, no worries. That one extra second will make our Milky Way pop just a little bit more, which is really amazing considering I'm in such a dark place. And one other thing, I don't have an intervalometer yet, so I had to do a two second timer so that when I press the shutter button, the camera does not take a picture while it's shaking. So. Woo. Once I was aimed properly, it was time for the first test shot. Okay, it's here. I'm just gonna focus, recenter a little bit, trying to avoid this disgusting bug, ew, and take my actual picture. If I can at least get one good image, then I can level up and get rewarded with an upgrade later. So it's important to go home with something fabulous. So it's only been a few minutes, but I don't have much more to do here. I'm only aiming for one good single frame and without stacking or using a tracker. So I think that I'm kind of done. Before leaving, I took another picture with a newer camera, the Canon RA, which was used to film this video. And I'll show you the result of that later as well. That way you can see how a picture from a newer camera compares to one that is older. Well, it got chilly, so uh, I'm gonna pack up and go home now. I'm sleepy, and I really just had my camera and uh, my lens, so it was a pretty easy pack up. So I'm gonna head off home because I feel confident I got what I wanted tonight, and uh, I'm gonna leave this rock here for someone else to enjoy. So goodbye, rock. Let's go. The way home was long, and difficult because of how late it was, but at least I was rewarded with a nice sunrise. Also, yeah, you know, we're not going to ignore that Antoine was there, he was filming. So uh, we helped each other stay awake on the way home, but he did not help me during the imaging. Promise! All right, we have teleported home and I got right to work processing. I use Luminar Neo from Skylum Software, which is actually the sponsor of this video. We've been using Luminar Neo for about a year and a half now, and it's like an enhanced version of Lightroom. We made a couple of videos about Luminar Neo in the past showing you how we use it for deep sky objects, but also how to do HDR combinations, stitch panoramas, and work on Milky Way shots. So this is perfect for this picture. I played around with some of the main settings, like of course the curves, histogram, colors, and also some of the special features like the enhanced slider or the noise reduction and detail sliders. Considering that this is a single shot from an old camera and a kit lens, I'm honestly impressed. This shows what type of result a true beginner can get with, you know, not so great gear. Once I level up a couple of times, I'll be able to use Pixinsight. But for a beginner, this is a perfect, easy to use tool to get the best possible result. Wow, look at us. Here we are. Finally finished. And you know, I think that it came out pretty well. Like I think not enough people get silly with astrophotography. I mean, I literally did it with like a rock and a camera and that's it like it's so it's so stupid it's so stupid but it's so fun like anybody could do it I think that we all get kind of lost in like the the sciencey aspect of it or like having the right gear but really all you needed was a camera I mean I just showed you I literally could do it with a rock and it's just very exciting so I'm very happy I processed it um I feel like people get a little too crazy about what it looks like too I really enjoyed um, making it kind of like colorful so you'll see that in just a second but I don't know uh, if you like it good if you don't like it too bad it's mine and we all take pictures of the Milky Way we do it a little differently so uh, be sure to let me know what you think and if you don't like it stay in your lane
it did take me forever in a year to photo or to edit it uh, kind of just as expected honestly I again really like the colorfulness of it so popped it out just a little bit more um, and I tried to really make it nice in the foreground because it was very very dark um, I still feel like it's not super duper awesome and you know some of the edges are not so great but honestly like for my first picture I really couldn't expect anything uh, more uh, I thought it was gonna be a lot worse to be honest oh but I'm very excited so um, I hope you enjoy it Uh, <laughs> I hear that you're the person to see for uh, buying Astro gear. Welcome, traveler. Did you succeed in your quest of capturing your very first Astro target? Yes, I did. Oh, wow. Very nice. Great picture. You have earned two tokens, which you can use in my shop for whatever upgrade you wish. Cool. So what would you like to choose as your next upgrade? You're still a beginner, so you will not be able to choose anything advanced yet, but you can pick something in the beginner line. Hmm, what do I pick? What would be the best move for me as a beginner? Wow, okay, wow, that's it. Uh, come back later for the next installment. This series is meant to teach beginners about uh, astrophotography and picking the most logical upgrade choices and the easiest targets to start with too. So who knows what'll happen next time. Stay tuned, bye.